शतान प्रसंगा हाय कृष्ण दिए दिवोटीज एंड वेलकम टू टुडे सेशन हाउ आर यू डूइंग आई प्रे दैट ऑल इज वेल विथ यू एंड योर फैमिलीज एट दिस टाइम so today we moving on to the next letter and it's a very instructive beautiful letter to garga muni prabhu so you remember the two brothers brahmananda and garga muni so prabhupada is writing to garga muni here about a situation that they have and the letter goes as follows letter to garga muni los angeles 11th January 1968 and Prabhupada writes the uh, date in reverse numerically and then he starts My dear Garga Muni please accept my blessings I am due receipt of your statement regarding Jeevanuga so this Jeevanuga devotee uh, seems to have some Uh, mental problems and he's uh, being disturbing the devotees there and they've written to Prabhupada about it what should we do because he seems to be mentally unstable so Prabhupada is now commenting on this and saying what to do uh, he goes on to say and it is clear that he is crazy I have already advised Jayananda in this connection that we cannot make the society an asylum for crazy people. So Prabhupada is saying listen he has a problem he is mentally unstable and if we cannot we don't have the proper means to treat we don't have the proper means to take care of such a person so he should go to an institution that can help him. and therefore prabhupada is advocating an asylum actually sure in in our days in krishna consciousness we had some really amazing people interesting people you know this is somebody who has a mental disorder i remember there was a guy that joined and he had uh, some serious problem of being possessed uh, he had joined a satanic cult and they had really messed him up and uh, you know he was used to uh, killing cats and you know doing all those crazy things drinking all crazy kind of things so uh, he came to the temple and and he wanted uh, he wanted help he wanted to change his lifestyle and change it and you can imagine how freaked out we got uh to know this because he didn't say this at first so he came in very enthusiastic very eager he joined because in those days we never asked for you know recommendations this that and the other now we've learned <laughs> many years later we've learned hey we just can't take anybody off the street you can try to help someone yes we can try to offer some food or something like that yes for sure but for somebody to come in and join us we we need to be sure we know who, who is coming in so this guy had this problem and uh, we didn't know what to do so he only revealed his mind a little later because what was happening is that he couldn't sleep at night and he would uh, you know make some funny noises and he would be get up so many times at night so he would disturb everyone in the ashram eventually we sat him down and asked him well, what's going on with you and then he said listen now i joined a satanic group and uh, i'm messed up and i need help so uh, and then what he would do because he needed the the taste of blood he would put a uh, ball bearing in his mouth to get that metallic taste or the iron taste that's what he would say crazy crazy stuff so he would put this metallic thing in his mouth to get like a iron taste of blood and that would like pacify him a bit and 
eventually we told him, hey, listen, you know, please go and get some help and then come back. But for now, you're going to have to go and get some help. So <laughs> we had some really uh, crazy guys uh, joining, you know. But look at the power of Krishna consciousness that it was able to try to help these people, give them some shelter. Uh, that was very profound. So Prabhupada is saying here, same for this uh, Jivanuga Prabhu. Prabhupada goes on to say, it is not our business. Mm? Prabhupada is saying, our business is preaching spiritual practice, spiritual life. So we can't take care of somebody like this. We are not in an asylum. You, you need a special institution to take care of somebody like this. So Prabhupada goes on to say, Jayananda is a very sincere and intelligent boy and I think his decision should be accepted as final in this matter. So Prabhupada is acknowledging Jayananda Prabhu and if we look at it a little broader, it's the spiritual master acknowledging the disciple. Both have to be qualified. We always say this guru must be qualified. Is the disciple qualified? So what is the qualification of the disciple? So Prabhupada is saying here, the qualification is intelligence and sincerity. Not uh, IQ level of intelligence, but emotional intelligence. You have to be thoughtful. You know, atato brahma jignasa. You have to question things. You have to be thoughtful. You have to be expedient. So these things are important. And you have to be sincere. So both of this Prabhupada is acknowledging as the spiritual master to the disciple. I'm just remembering there's that beautiful video. Uh, ah, you can hear the thunderstorm. Today we're having a lot of rain. From the morning it's been raining here in Mayapur today. So uh, Jayananda, that beautiful video where they're having a darshan and Prabhupada is sitting there. And he's looking, and the camera, you can see Prabhupada is looking at Jayananda. And then he says to everyone, Jayananda looks just like Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> wow, everybody was like, Haribo! Everybody was like, so, phew, what a compliment. Huh? Because he was a very tall figure, very beautiful features. You see him on the Ratiyatra chariot, we put his photo in front of the chariot. So, very amazing personality. So, Prabhupada is saying in that darshan that Jayananda looks just like Lord Chaitanya. I, I remember that one was so amazing. So, Prabhupada goes on to say here, yeah, Not only in this case, but in every other complicated case, the elected authorities in the management at the temple should be the final authority in these matters. So, you know, we didn't, now everything goes to ISKCON Resolve and all of that. And so Prabhupada is saying, you know, you can't take every petty thing to the GBC level, you know. There must be a, a, a certain level of authenticity and respect for the local management and see if you can solve it there. And if you can't, then escalate it to the higher levels, surely. But if you can, solve it in its uh, infancy and then in that level it will be resolved. Because there's definitely going to be squabbles and differences. I think Prabhupada goes on to make this point in a more elaborate way. So Prabhupada is saying, you know, don't let small squabbles and differences go right to GBC level when, when it can be resolved locally. And if it can't, then you escalate it. Luckily now we have uh, forums like ISKCON Resolve and things like that that can assist devotees in difficult, complicated situations. So Prabhupada goes on to say, otherwise the society cannot be managed. So he's saying if you're going to take petty things right to the top, it's, you're going to burden them with all the petty stuff. When are they going to fix and resolve the real issues that they're there for? You know, global issues, international issues, national issues, temple, real temple problems. So let them do their part and small things keep it small. So Prabhupada goes on to say, Our main principle should be, so Prabhupada is saying, this is how you should question whether it's important or not. 
and also this is how you should solve it if you keep this mentality in mind so he says our main principle should be to advance the cause of krishna consciousness that should be the motto what can we do to advance the preaching program what can we do to advance the cause of krishna consciousness if that is there the other day we were saying that we should be in the mood of a servant and if we in the mood of a servant then krishna is in the center if we in the center nothing can be resolved that way but if krishna is in the center even the opposing party will accept because it's krishna centered prabhu goes on to say i am glad to hear that you i am glad to hear that your cooperation for the society is appreciated by the authorities so even the authorities are saying we appreciate your maturity on this issue and we appreciate your maturity on events that's a very nice comment we should learn to forget and forgive minor incidents because whenever there are too many in a place there is always some misunderstanding <laughs> so you know it's it's a difficult thing to do but proper saying whenever there's two people in this in a situation there's it's because it's either me or you but if you put krishna in the center then there's a choice for a third person who is the supreme person so it's not just the third party now it's the supreme person and there is room then for uh, agreeing to disagree hmm? there is room for negotiation but if just you are in the center and i'm in the center there's no room for negotiation it's my way or the highway <laughs> as they say uh, so prabhupad is is uh, expressing this point very strongly so prabhupad is also saying learn to forgive and forget so it's yes <laughs> in in current circumstances of life remember we in the age of quarrel manda sumanda matayo manda bharga upadhritah bhagavatam says this is the age of kali then then people here are misfortunate they misguided they always lamenting and they quarrel some Mm, they quarrel some small thing becomes a big argument so prabhupad's advice forgive and forget so yes we should forgive and forget but first forgive first learn to forgive once the forgiveness is there the forget will take some more time and sometimes it's healthy also not to forget because then you know you're dealing with this person this person has this nature be careful otherwise you'll be hurt again but that doesn't mean there's animosity it means you've forgiven you've forgiven the person but you've been careful so you forgive yes that is very important but don't forget so easily for your own protection and so the incident doesn't get repeated and slowly as you build trust that relationship then can be Uh, reinstated gradually but trust only comes when you are convinced that the person has made some change to help and to build your relationship prabhupad goes on to say such misunderstandings happen even between husband and wife what to speak of others so prabhupad is saying is happening there in the house the war is not happening in the world is happening in the house especially now with the lockdown you know they locked everybody up and and I, i can just imagine how difficult it is to stay with the same person all the time looking at the same person all the time it's not like darshan you know taking darshan of krishna you like hey i can't take it anymore <laughs> so it gets like that what to speak if there's a misunderstanding it will just explode so they're saying there's becoming mental problems are arising due to the lockdown as well so it's just being inflamed but prabhupad is saying it's already happening between husband and wife anyway but we have to adjust things on the basis of krishna consciousness so always bring it back to krishna consciousness bring krishna back in the center 
when Krishna is in the center, there's a chance for improvement. There's a chance for uh, change. But if you and I are in the center, no chance for change. Because we just uh, enforce our egocentric nature upon the issue. There's no chance for no chance for discussion or change. But if Krishna is in the center, very good opportunity for that. Prabhupada goes on to say, we should always remember that Krishna consciousness is a challenge to the modern misguided human society and we have to meet many unfavorable incidents. So many things will come up in our way and because we're challenging the norm and not only that, we're challenging Maya. So many things will come our way, but we have Krishna on our side. If Krishna is there, we take shelter of Krishna, then aham tam sarva pape bhyo mokse syami ma suchaha. Don't fear. He's saying, don't fear. Be dependent on me. I'll take care of things. Prabhupada goes on to say, but if we are sincere to Krishna and the spiritual master combinedly, and this is the beauty of this letter. Prabhupada is revealing something very deep here. That our commitment to Krishna consciousness is not only Krishna, but it's also to the spiritual master. Combinedly, our practice is combined, the spiritual master and Krishna. If we're just approaching Krishna only, then it is Krishna worship and, and he's not obliged to respond. But if we're worshipping with the spiritual master, then it's a combined effort, it's his prayer, it's his request. Together with our sincerity, Krishna will definitely help. He goes on to say, then everything will be favorably settled. We should always remember that Krishna consciousness can only remain on two parallel lines of Krishna and the spiritual master. So both need to be followed because we have obligation to both and we are connected to both, yet both are one. Achintya Beda, Abeda Tattva. They are simultaneously one, yet they are different. Prabhupada explains then, chant Hare Krishna sincerely and all good intelligence consultation shall come from within. Krishna says that to those who engage in my service, I give intelligence for this progressive march. So Prabhupada is quoting Bhagavad Gita 10.10. .10. He does that a lot in his letters, I think. Hmm? So he says, for those who are doing my bhajan with priti, my sadhana with love, then tadadi buddhi yogam tam. I give them the buddhi, the understanding. Yena maamupiyantite to come to me. So Krishna will give that consultation, Prabhupada says, very nicely. And then he ends, your ever well wisher, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. So very informative, very instructive, and very enlightening. We need both the spiritual master and Krishna as parallel lines in our sadhana and spiritual practice. So thank you very much. I hope you have a good day today. Please join us again tomorrow. Hare Krishna.